Good morning. I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for September 5th, 2023. The question I'm going to look at today is, are you ready for war in Ukraine to continue for one or two more years? Well, that's the strategy that was outlined by a top British analyst in an op-ed in the Financial Times from two days ago. Uh, it was written by General Sir Richard Lawson Barons, who's the former chief of the UK Joint Forces Command. And he said that the Russian army can be beaten, but quote, not in 2023, but in 2024 or 25. And what he basically said is what's necessary is patience and money, money for the military industrial complex. Uh, he laid out a, a five point perspective. I'll just review it quickly for you to give you a sense of the thinking that's going on inside the top establishment layers uh, of the British military and intelligence services. Uh, first, don't press for substantial battlefield gains immediately without the means to deliver it. Now, this goes against the line that we've had from months about the wonderful counteroffensive that was going to break the power of Russia and that it was postponed and it's slogging, slow going and so on. He's basically saying it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen this year. However, he said what's necessary is point number two, maintain relentless pressure against Russian occupation through the winter. So more sacrifices of Ukrainian lives uh, in the futile counteroffensive this winter, which he admits will not succeed. And point number three, keep fighting into, into 2024 to, Russian, to, to weaken Russia's military grip on its territories. Again, more dead Ukrainians, more Western funds, more dead Russians, more crossing of red lines with the threat of escalation to a full-scale war of NATO against Russia. Uh, number four, neutralize Russia's Black Sea fleet. How are you going to do that? Probably this calls for more missiles, F-16 bombers, and, and so on. And then point number five, and this is the, the important one. We must upgrade the, quote, defense industrial capacity of the West and Ukraine as the determining factor in military success, unquote. Well, this is the military industrial complex playbook. More money. We need more funds, more factories. We need more resources going to the, the Beltway consultants and the, the uh, uh, various kinds of military complexes, including intelligence. Now, this is, you might say, the oligarchy's playbook but it's been escalated after the BRICS summit because the BRICS summit represented a break in the continuity of the ability to impose the rules-based order on the whole world. Now, when I say the playbook of the oligarchy, here's what they've been able to do. They use wars, regime change coups, assassination, terrorism, and financial warfare to reinforce submission to the so-called rules-based order. You stay in line or you'll be next. They, at the same time, they use hybrid warfare or brainwashing or control of the narrative to keep the Western, the population of Western nations supporting these policies by not knowing what's really going on and assuming that whatever's going on in the global South represents a threat to the US and Europe uh, this includes the line that Russia and China are planning to build a new global empire and, and overturn capitalism and so on and so forth. Now, <clears throat> yesterday I gave the case of Argentina. Argentina was one of the six nations added to the BRICS at the Johannesburg summit uh, a week and a half ago. Now, Argentina now is becoming a test case. The current government of Argentina wants to join the BRICS. And one of the leading candidates for president, Massa, is a supporter of the BRICS. But what we're seeing is financial blackmail being used, including speculative attacks on the currency, 
to so weaken Argentina and um, impose misery on the population that the current government will be voted out or the party of the current government will be voted out and replaced by a hardcore neoliberal speculator who is being pushed for the uh, presidency of Argentina. Now, when we talk about these kinds of threats, keep in mind, it was just over a year ago, September 1st, 2022, that there was an assassination attempt against Vice President Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner which fortunately failed, but shows that the, the intent to use whatever means necessary to defeat this tendency in Argentina to become part of the BRICS, that the West is willing to support it and go all out. Now, we also see the battle developing in West Africa, where national nationalist militaries are throwing out corrupt presidents corrupt elected officials who owe their power and their money to the French, what's called the France Afrique. And we've, we've seen this with one coup after another, most recently in Niger and now in Gabon. Uh, these are coups against French neocolonial policy. And one specialist, uh, Thomas Del Toma, calls this the second decolonization process that nations of West Africa are asserting their rights for sovereignty against the colonial overseers. The, uh, now, we're, we're also seeing that the next battleground shaping up will be on the 9th and 10th of September in New Delhi, where the G20 summit will take place. There are concerted efforts by the West to pull India away from Russia, away from the BRICS, into conflict with China and to bring India into the Asian NATO policy. It's not working too well. And the reason for that is that Prime Minister Modi has a different conception. Uh, he laid this out uh, yesterday, a, a change in economic thinking. He said, quote, the GDP-centric view of the world is changing to a human-centric one. Now, what does he mean by that? That wealth should not be measured by money but through the advances in science and technology and the ability to assimilate that by a growing section of the population, which increases the productive power of the population in physical wealth production. The, to increase man's power over the universe requires not just science and technological development, but for that to spread to a growing sector of the population. As Modi said, we now have a billion minds that are working on this and two billion hands that are involved in this kind of process and millions of hungry youth. And he didn't mean hungry for food, but hungry for discoveries and science and, and advances. This was clear when he described China, uh, uh, India's successful moon mission as a gain for all mankind. Now, he also is calling for the inclusion of the African Union as a member in the G20. So this is the, uh, in a sense, a, a move toward finishing a battle that's at least 50 years old, going back to 1971 when Nixon pulled the plug on the Bretton Woods system, ended the fixed exchange rate system, which evolved into a floating uh, exchange rate system, which was favorable for speculators which allowed for a huge increase in wealth of the speculators who had their special relations with the central banks and with the private banks, but a growing gap between rich and poor. Now, the, this, this, was to, this created an ongoing process of bubbles and bubbles popping. Uh, the, the, most recent examples being the 2008 bubble and then again in 2019. But going back to 1971, what was consistent was Lyndon LaRouche's alternative to this, his proposals for an international development bank, for a four powers agreement. These were centered around cooperation by sovereign nation states in scientific and technological advance and cooperation to share the benefits of those advances. And that's what we see now emerging with the BRICS. 
Now, what we've seen from the West under the direction, especially of central banks led by the U.S. Federal Reserve, is to address the bubble economy by covering the uncollectible debt by printing money, creating liquidity. This doesn't increase solvency, it increases inflation. That's what the policy of the Western central banks has been. And that's what the talk about a great reset is all about, giving more power over spending to give total dictatorial control over credit and spending policy to the hands of the private banks and their, the central banks they control. Now, part of the process of this has been involved, has included looting the global South nations, getting cheap raw materials, cheap labor, uh, imposing international monetary fund conditionality so they can't spend money on infrastructure and development, including education and health care. Well, this era has ended. We see now the rise of the global south, and any effort to continue this neo-colonial policy will be met with stiff resistance and probably war against those who refuse to knuckle under to the rules-based order. This includes the danger of nuclear war, as we see in the relentless pursuit of more and more war uh, in the proxy war against Russia and Ukraine. We're building an international peace coalition, not just anti-war, but committed to a new strategic and development architecture, which takes into concern the development of all nations based on the sovereign interests of all nations for their people. We're not just anti-war or anti-dollar, but this is a new paradigm which is coming into being. And the BRICS summit was a step in the right direction. So the question is, which way will the global north go? And that's a question we'll be answering this weekend, Saturday, starting Saturday the 9th. While the G20 is underway, the Schiller Institute will have a conference to take up this question. Uh, again, I'll have the registration form attached in the description section, as well as a discussion I had with Helga Zepp-LaRouge last week on how we can win this fight. So thanks for joining me today. Share this video, join our movement, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Hello, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Support our independence to produce videos like these. Become a member of the LaRouche organization at thelarouche.org slash member. By becoming a member for $25 or more, You'll get special access to the EIR Alert Daily Briefing and Weekly Magazine, which is what I read to stay on top of things.